So mediations can be challenging, but mediating with a narcissist, ugh. That is not a walk in the park, but it's not impossible. Being prepared will make the experience a lot better. And today I'm gonna to share with you how to prepare for a meeting with a narcissist and then how to get through with it with your dignity intact. This is the nightmare of nightmares. You're in a conflict with a complete narcissist, somebody who basically thinks that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and the most wonderful gift to the universe. And you need to find your way through. When you are preparing, you need to frame every single idea according to their interest. So obviously you need to prepare thinking about what are your interests here for sure. But then as you think about how you will frame ideas, you need to frame them in ways that will meet their interests and don't even bring up your interests because typically a narcissist actually doesn't care what your interests are. They actually don't care about what's fair and they frankly typically don't care about what it looks like. And so this is one of the ways in which the advice is really different from the kind of standard advice that I might give to someone who's mediating with somebody who maybe they're in conflict with, but who isn't displaying that kind of narcissistic behavior. Because most of us, while we are susceptible to self-serving biases, and especially when we're in conflict, we tend to think that we're right and the other side is wrong, we still do care about an outcome that is seen by others and even our nemesis as being fair-minded. But a narcissist typically doesn't think that way. And so what that means is in your preparation, you need to know what your interests are, but you need to brainstorm your ideas around what their interests are. Second, once you are in the mediation, you have to do everything you can to make all of the ideas and options seem like they are the narcissist's ideas. Now, this is really complicated because if you're bringing up the idea, it automatically seems like it's your idea. And we know from psychological research that human beings are susceptible to something that's called reactive devaluation. So that, that means that even non-narcissists tend to react to an idea from the other side in a way that devalues the ingenuity, the creativity, and the value of that idea. So how am I in this mediation gonna make an idea that is mine seem like it's theirs? One way of doing this is to work with the mediator to bring up an idea that you may have raised first, but to bring it up and talk to the other side in a way that makes it seem like the idea came from the other side and meets their interests. So let me give you an example going back many, many years ago. With a colleague, I was working with a nonprofit and the nonprofit was thinking about how they should restructure their governance. And everyone on the board knew that it was really important to make some key changes if this organization was gonna be able to survive through some very lean financial times. However, the chair of the board yes, was a narcissist. And so one of the things we had to do is plan some ideas early in the mediation and then let them simmer for sometimes even weeks and find a way to have them pop up again, but credit the ideas as belonging to the narcissist. And this actually ended up being very successful. And so in the end, there was this broad restructuring but it was all framed as if the chair of the board was the hero and the savior of the entire organization. Third, if you're in a mediation with a narcissist, you need to be an active listener par excellence, acknowledging their emotions constantly, constantly rephrasing over and over and over again what you've heard as accurately as possible. The more the narcissist feels emotionally validated, the more likely they are to make some concessions. Fourth, focus on your core goals. Aspirationally, in any mediation, we wanna to try to get to interests 
to actually come up with something that's value creating. I think when you're in a mediation with a narcissist, you have to have some more modest goals. What do you need to do to extricate yourself from this situation? Chances are you're not going to want to be in an ongoing relationship with this person. Your chances are you're not trying to rebuild a relationship. You're trying to defend your interests as best you can and then have a future that involves them as little as possible. And so that might mean paring back some of your goals for the mediation. Finally, because going into a mediation like this involves putting aside your ego and floating the boat of somebody who you probably really dislike, you need to have some strategies for how to handle your own emotional refractory period. What is an emotional refractory period? It is that period that often lasts between five and 20 minutes when the other side has said something that we find very triggering. And it is so triggering that it actually causes a physiological response, meaning that actual chemicals are released in our brain, chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline, and those chemicals flood the frontal lobe, meaning that our cognitive thinking disappears and we are likely to defend, become reactionary, become really negative, and actually escalate. And so if I'm going into a, a mediation with a narcissist, I need to have some very tangible strategies of what I will do when my emotions are triggered. So that might mean asking for a break. That might mean naming to myself my own feelings. So we call this naming it to tame it. So before we end, I want to acknowledge that it's not always the case that when you're in a mediation with a narcissist, you can end your affiliation with them once the mediation is done. Because some of us have family members who are narcissists. Some of us have bosses who are narcissists. Some of us have colleagues who are narcissists. And so we're going to be stuck with them going forward. And if you're in that kind of a situation, a few suggestions. First, as much as you can, try to minimize your contact with them. Now you can't do that if it's your boss. You can't necessarily do that if it's your father, but there may be some ways that you can actually build in some self protections, limiting your engagement with them. Secondly, when possible, Consider, are there ways to improve your BATNA so that next time you don't find yourself in the same situation? So what is a BATNA? A BATNA is called our best alternative to a negotiated agreement. It's what I'm going to do if I don't reach an agreement with you. So if, for example, I'm experiencing my manager as a narcissist, the end of this mediation probably does not mean I'm not stuck with this boss. But what I can do is update my CV, and start going on the job market, maybe even internally in my company to find, is there a way that I can get transferred, I can get promoted, or I can change my job? One of the challenges of dealing with a narcissist is that there's really no winning, and even worse, there's hardly ever a concern or an ability to come to a mutually acceptable outcome. Narcissists only care about themselves and their interests and they don't make mistakes. And so one of your goals whenever possible is try to leave that mediation with as little continuing contact with them as you can. So if this is a topic that's of interest to you, keep watching the next video, which is when should you not negotiate at all? Also, do me a big favor and please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd be so grateful if you did. And so that you don't miss new videos, please ring the bell so you'll be notified every time I drop a new video here. Okay, keep on watching. Okay, you know you wanna binge watch these videos.